All right, guys. So welcome to the latest episode, blog, video, podcast, whatever you want to call it. Um, today's a super exciting one or this is super early time of the day. So as you can see, I'm probably look like I've been sleeping because I have because it's super early in Oz. Uh, and we're talking to my brother over in Canada. Where are you based at the minute? Right now I'm at Blue Mountain uh, in Ontario. So about two hours north of Toronto. Wicked. So yeah. guys, this is a super, this will be a super good video and I'll probably learn all, just as much um, during this chat as you guys will. But um, basically I've seen my whole brother, my whole brother, my brother's whole uh, experience with mental health challenges from a young age and how he's dealt with them um, and how it's affected or impacted or shaped his life. Um, to where he is now where he's you know traveling and having an awesome time over in Canada so for those of you who are facing challenges super this will be epic for you you'll just be able to see how low you can go in terms of your self-worth and um, all of that sort of jazz to them being able to live an incredible life abroad so James how's it going fill us in <laughs> fill us, in. Fill us <laughs> all right. take us well, back like so, Thinking take us, yeah, take us back to you know how old were you? When was a significant uh, time for you? I think actually you felt interesting enough. There you go. Oh, uh, interesting enough for me. Actually, uh, it was really right early on. Uh, uh, it point stand. She recalls saying to her mom, like. I just get into like moods where I was really, really flat and sad. And I just would say to her, I don't know why. And I didn't know how. And it wasn't until I was older, like that I started understanding it wasn't due to anything really. I just, I don't know whether it was a chemical makeup or what, but I would just get in these moods where I'd feel really, really low and uh, various things could influence it throughout life situations, like clashing with people, stuff like that, bullying and all sorts of things, play factors and stuff like that. And, um, would have been probably like eight when I first recall feeling uh, what I'd class as like actually depressed not just sad and that wasn't triggered by anything that was just I guess I, I don't even really know I used to think it was my perspective of the world um, but interesting enough as I'll explain is like I can you can shift your perspective of the world and with that uh, everything can change but yeah growing up went to school I've always like found that I've struggled to fit in whether I was in the popular group or not I've always felt just like I, I'm a bit of an outsider, a bit quirky, um, things like that. But yeah, yeah, I, um, I got like to pretty low points in stages and I'd obviously go to you and our mom for support and sometimes friends and things like that. But I actually tended to keep a lot of it to myself. And I found that like the worst possible thing for me to do. Uh, I even remember one day you were at a, uh, girlfriend's house and I had to go pick you up and I hadn't slept for three days because I was the, just in such a slump and it was around Christmas time and um, I picked you up and I cried like sitting out the front of that house waiting I was just bawling and crying and crying couldn't understand why couldn't that was one of I'm not sure where James went, but he is in Canada on some dodgy ass uh, Wi-Fi. So we'll see. You, like, uh, uh, yeah. You're back. You yeah. Cut out, but we're good. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Where'd you hear up to? No, just keep going. It's probably recording, um, but I was just letting everyone know if it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I put like if, I mean, like if yeah, if I look back on my lifestyle, it starts actually to make a bit of sense. Why I guess. I was feeling that way. I was always, I you can vouch for this, like the most unhealthy child, eating shit food, would never eat anything good, exercise. I don't think I did any any sport at school in our high school years at all. Would even fake sick to get out of it. Um, yeah, I honestly was just, I just 
sit at home, video game, read, write. I've always loved that. Like, um, but yeah, it was, it was weird. I'd get into like little slumps about things. And I noticed whenever I got more involved with things and actually took chances on, you know, hanging out with other people, going to social events, trying to actually exercise. I noticed that's where I would get, I would get more so like the, the, what I'd describe it as is like a cloud in my case that came over me in stages, but it'd always move on. I saw that in a video uh, by that Prince EA fella. I uh, Prince it. Yeah. 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 And that, uh, that fit my description of it. It's always like a cloud. It comes over you and it goes and comes and goes, but yeah, that's the thing you got to remember that it's never permanently there. So, I, uh, so just to jump in quickly before you said um, there was a difference between being depressed and sad and that's something oh, that yeah. so many people aren't aware of and you know people most majority of people when they're sad they say I'm depressed which is really just taking the piss on being depressed um, so for you what was the notice it, yeah it, Mine for me was I was insecure as fuck about it. Oh, sorry. Sorry for swearing. Uh, I was really, really insecure about it. Um, I, I don't know. I always noticed there were lots of kids that I went to school with and there were some that were so confident. But like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm super depressed. Oh, uh, this, that, you know, carry on about it. And I was like, how do they have this confidence? For me, it was a severe insecurity. I didn't want but that was like definitely a facade I put on so no one would actually see what was going on beneath the surface and being sad everyone gets sad you're sad if you don't win you know a running race you're sad if you don't get pickles on your burger when you ordered it with that like you get those things they don't actually I feel like the depression is something that consumes you and it changes your mindset. When you're sad, in my opinion, you're just sad about a certain thing. Like that event that just took place upsets me. Depressed would be something that would consume my whole being, where I'd alter my perspective, where I wouldn't be able to see a way out, where I wouldn't know how to improve or move forward. And I'd just get into a slump. Digging down deeper, it would, it, it would, it was definitely distinguishable, but I'm not sure how to really describe it. But I think if anyone listening to this going through it, they'll be able to determine whether they're actually going through something really difficult and like depression or whether they're actually just sad. It's, and I think I do in a way, you know, sometimes when you hear about people going, Oh, I'm depressed and they're really just sad in a way, it's kind of like use a different terminology because it, it'll lessen the, the strength of that word in a way like it, it takes it takes the piss out of it um because it is actually a real condition and it affects a lot of people and a lot of people you would never expect and yeah that is my perspective on the two yeah and i think it's you know our thoughts control our feelings and emotions so if you're constantly saying you're depressed you're going to talk yourself into being depressed oh, even if you're just sad um, oh yeah you gotta i don't think there's a way personally they just this is, once again this is only my experiences with it but i don't think there's a way to get out of it unless you start by shifting your perspective i i just don't when i look back on mine i just don't the amount of times i tried to change my life half assed and i couldn't it just wouldn't work and it wasn't until i guess i remember having mum wanting me to get into health and exercise and you as well and you guys were doing some products at the time for health and mum was so confident in that fact that it could like change my, like she literally saw the slump I was in I mean I was smoking a lot of weed back then like I did I smoked a lot and I, I like yeah. yeah fun times but I do regret it and that probably aided in it. it it put me in like a slump I was comfortable and content being in that ditch um but mom, I remember mom saying, like, honestly, I will, I want you to try these, uh, these products, like this system, actually, and I will pay for it for you because I'm that confident it'll help you. But you've just got to exercise and take these things and just see it for one month. That's all she wanted. And I remember I was like, can I, righty, I'll try it. Can I put some perspective around this? This is coming from a guy who literally would only 
show his head from his room if he was going downstairs to get some food and then he'd go straight back in. So you literally yeah. didn't see him any other time. No, uh, everyone, I, was, I was like a little hobbit in the hobbit hole, everyone would say. Yeah, I, would, I was a hermit. I wouldn't. And I liked it that way, which was incident. Like, and I remember you telling me, actually, you saying like to me so many times, you don't know what you're going to like until you go try things. Like, I can't just wake up and go, that's something I'm going to like. Like, and I was like, oh, I do, I do. But I never did. And now I'm over in Canada. And like this morning, I went snowboarding for the first time, just nailed it, loved it. Um, but like, that's... Uh, I and i'd be in my you guys i'd always say like i was like i was on the offensive with you guys like you guys don't get what it's like and i think that may have come from the fact that i was insecure about it i don't know but i wasn't really into taking advice but when mum mentioned that and i was like okay she's gonna pay for it it's free food and stuff i was like sure thing uh took it started exercising and i had tried to exercise before i'll admit but never really had the energy for it and that was i mean that's probably the most the peak of my life with like i mean my endorphins were going crazy i was really uh changing much more outgoing and social uh i was always socially awkward i guess um but i just seemed to i don't know i really seemed to thrive off help, uh, taking more chances really and exercising exercise was so important and nutrition and that's why I guess that system that I mentioned was really, really important because it made and, it easy for me. I don't have a big appetite. That helped. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was getting good nutrition and great exercise and I was working on it every day and it wasn't obviously still at times I did feel I would go, I would feel down. I'd get into those slumps, but I almost became like hooked on the little endorphin releases of exercising and my body after just taking like in good nutrition, I guess, rather than McDonald's every every day i started noticing my mood lifting even when i would get in those slumps they weren't that deep i was and it was always a quicker bounce back rather than full slump high low high low it was more like highs little low highs little low highs like that like uh yeah and that was a big difference i noticed just from nutrition and exercise yeah so just on on touching on that like that's what happens and this is what i'm a massive believer in if you just put good nutrition in your body and you know it doesn't matter whether you're vegan vegetarian or hard out carnivore if you can yeah. put some good quality stuff in that your body actually needs to fuel be fueled off not the crap that we get served up most days or most people mm. from the supermarkets your body will start working incredibly well you'll start feeling incredibly well your energy will be awesome and you'll start feeling like you need to exercise because, or not exercise, but move. And yeah, move, literally, yeah. And movement can be literally whatever you want it to be um, as long as you're being active. Um, so where was I going with that? So what's for you one of the, the darkest days you've got? Because I, I got a memory in mind from like 2011. But for you, what was the darkest point? The darkest point I got to was uh, um, I've kind of repressed it. That's the thing. But I I don't fully remember. It was just a very darker period of my life. I was in a slump for a good several months. And it got to the point where I didn't want to actually keep going through it. That was the thing. I got all the joys and the perks of life that everyone would talk about and everyone was so excited for. But for me, it got that bad that none of that would entice me. None of that. I would think about something that I'd normally love. Let's say like reading. I'd think about reading my favorite book and I wouldn't, the the thrill, I guess that spark of life just wasn't there. I'd be like, that's just a book. I don't want to do that. And I remember that's where I was like noticing I was in a bad place, but I mean, I got like to the point where I pretty much ready to take my own life at one point. Uh, and that was definitely a, a shocked place. Cause I never thought, I mean, I'd had the thoughts occasionally, but I'd never actually, I mean, I nearly went through with it and that was a really, really shocking time for me and i actually didn't tell anyone about that 
and that's the thing that really clicked in my head was like my family's unaware of this they don't know where I am what I'm doing right now and that was part of the reason I, I kind of like I guess backed out of it I felt like I'd be leaving uh, like the people that cared about me in a worse estate than I was actually in whilst being alive but yeah that was probably my darkest point but that was definitely that was years ago now which is I've come so far since then which is really good but um I mean that was like four or five years ago but yeah mm. that was definitely a point of I, I felt like it was no return and the reasoning was I just didn't want it to persist the sadness like I and the spark like that joy of life that we all have it was just that far buried that I didn't feel it and I didn't see the point and I didn't want to go through any hurt or sadness anymore and yeah but it's really weird it's kind of like you know there's the calm before the storm it's like reverse before that it's like the storm and then the calm it got that bad and then it kind of gave me a different perspective on stuff because I was like I'm at that point how could things get any worse I'm at the point of wanting to take my own life what could get worse and that made me go in a way like well why don't like I've got nothing else to lose by living I'm already feeling as bad as I can possibly feel so what's the purpose in you know just getting rid of it like this is it and I'm still here and I don't know why it was the self-talk that really helped me and then speaking to I guess my mom about it and I found that hard actually and I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate because you talk to your loved ones but even though they're there comforting you you <coughs> you're aware that they're caring on a whole other level. They're trying to listen and give you the right advice, but it is just tormentful on them. And, and that was something that made me not want to tell the people I like, that I cared about, sorry. But yeah, that was definitely the lowest point. You said something then that is brilliant, which is like, if I'm already at the lowest point. Mm. What? If you're at a point where you're willing to take your own life, that's the end game. Cause you, after you die, end of existence, what 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 could be worse if you're living like what what could possibly be bad enough you're already at the point where you want to take your own life surely anything else can't push you any further than that you're already going to do it it just i don't know it seemed logical to me at the time and it still does now it might not make sense to other people but i don't know yeah it just we all have that drive to want to keep going no matter what you just you just lose it sometimes everyone can i'm sure everyone has at points um, but it'll always be there. You just got to search for it and think about it. always. Yeah. Think it through. Yeah. So how, you know, when all the times that mum tried to reach out to you and help you, how would you, this is for other people as well. Like for the position you were in, what would have been the easiest way for people to reach out to you and actually make it, make an impact? Was that possible or not possible? At it, that was, point? it was difficult in a way because I'd be screaming for help on the inside. I'd be sit there and I was always, I, my, my mind always races a million miles an hour. And I, I think through a lot more than I actually talk. And I talk <laughs> quite a lot. Um, I, I mean, my mum would come out with ideas, all sorts of things like a parent would do. She was, I mean, clutching at straws at the end, like just trying anything possible. Like we could try and, you know, whatever. Like I guess a caring parent wanting her child to be okay. She tried everything from trying to get me involved in sports to see a doctor to perks, like, oh, let's shopping. I don't know, like literally all sorts of things. But I wanted to be, I wanted to be okay and I wanted to be heard, but it was really weird for me. I didn't want to hear it from those people that I cared about because in my mind, I felt like they were just telling me what they thought I needed to hear for me to have this go away. So it was okay. They could stop worrying. Everything would be good. And I was like, that's not a solution. It doesn't just work like that. I wanted to hear it from someone that it was completely natural from, I think. Like, a, like, that sounds stupid and I don't know why it would ever happen, but like a stranger in the street. I feel like that would have meant more than the words from, like, let's say your mouth. Because you, I felt, maybe were obliged to. You'd want to. You have that desire to. You're my brother. You, like, care for me. But a stranger in the street has no ties to me whatsoever. 
and for them to notice something or say mention my value just things that could lift your mood up and really help you in times and that's why i think like the kindness of strangers and just being honestly the nicest and like the best you can be to anyone because you never know what someone's going through you never know if that person you serve at work serve them a coffee and just give them a compliment you don't know if they haven't had a compliment in 10 years and that meant the world to them and that changed them they could have been going with that coffee to jump off a bridge you don't know and there's no harm in giving anyone any sort of support like that but to me it was because yeah it was definitely hearing it from the people i cared about i would go to them to talk about it because i was scared and i wouldn't know what to say and i'd want the advice but everything i'd hear it was basically falling on deaf ears i just i wouldn't i don't know I just wouldn't it was different it's so hard to explain but that was yeah my experience i just it just didn't really uh work when it got to that worst point like hearing it from other people it makes sense but it's it's super interesting um because the way you explained it from my perspective and once again like this is only my opinion and you're giving your opinion none of this is really medical advice or anything like that so yeah if you are listening to this and going through something, there's heaps of awesome helplines, etc. But um, it seems, from my opinion, once again, that your your self worth or your value or how you valued yourself was in the hands of other people, definitely, and not the people that actually meant something to you, just random people. Which I get that because we yeah. all we all seek recognition and significance from people like it's it's one of the biggest you know six basic human needs and for those who don't know what they are go listen go research six basic human needs and you'll realize some areas in your life that you're craving um Mm -hmm. but in reality and i don't know where you're at right now but like doesn't it make sense that if we find our own value and self-worth from within we you learn that hey i don't actually give a crap what anyone else says to me I really yeah. care a lot about what the people around my, my circle of influence say, because there's opinion yeah. matter. Um, and it sort of flips it on its head, but we never get taught oh, yeah. from a young age, how to value ourselves. So, you know, it's such a struggle for so many people, like we've all been through it to, to get that recognition from other people. Yeah. It's, that's very true. I mean, I, I, I even still will seek, recognition from my peers and things like that like acceptance I, i'll still go with that i noticed um everyone does yeah yeah it's it's literally now like you look at animals do it too you buy the hierarchy they'll always go to the top um but yeah i definitely think that played a significant role in a lot of things it I, yeah, I wanted these, I put so much value in the thoughts of people that probably never even gave a thought about me. They probably just saw me on the side of the street and nothing. And meanwhile, I'd be analyzing myself, how I presented myself, how I looked, what the things I said, I'd be overanalyzing everything, critiquing myself, thinking other people were too. Maybe some were, but certainly not every single person I met in my life, but that's how I'd view it. And it was just... Like I'll still think overthink like that now, but I don't, it doesn't burden me. It doesn't weigh me down. It's more of a split second instinct thought, like yep. uh, rather than something I dwell on. And yeah, it's, that's an interesting thing that the acceptance part of it, cause that definitely does. Uh, yeah. Motivate a lot of your, your mood swings and things like that. I found anyway. But when you, when you finally stop caring about that, well, it, it is hard to, but you have to find, like, you'll never, ever be happy until you're truly happy. I mean, you can have all the money in the world, in my perspective. You can buy, you can do fun things, buy a jet ski, whatever. Have fun, but you won't be content. And that's the thing. Content is what will, being content is what will just bring you yeah. to ultimate joy, really. And that's, I think the only way is, is everything around the world can seem bad and good and situations can seem bad and good. But if you're actually happy with who you are as a person, then you'll always support the decisions you make. You'll always support yourself even if no one else does because at the end of the day, family, they're always there for you. But some people don't even have that. The one thing you can always rely on is yourself. So why not love yourself? Why not treat yourself good? 
And same with health and nutrition, and just like feed your body the right stuff too, physically and also mentally. You gotta you gotta love yourself so it can feel that. It'll it'll thrive, honestly. I just had an awesome question from something you'd said and I was just getting completely forgot the question, kept listening to. Yeah. Um, yeah, ranted on. No, that was good. Um, um, um well, second or last two questions really. I still from a good perspective I sort of wanted to get out from I guess our relationship is in terms of how other people react around people going through stuff because I remember yeah. um I didn't handle it well for so many years like I would always just fucking shake you around and be like snap out of it wake up to yourself but I was going to say that yeah all that sort of stuff um, and you know, I think there's so many people who still do that because they don't understand what someone's going through. They think it's literally just a thought, but obviously yeah. there's so much more going on uh, underneath that. And that's probably the worst thing you can do. It, see, in a way that was, I was going to bring that up, but, um, in a way it was, but now I look back because see, I hated hearing that. And I'm, you know, I've talked about that what you used to do um to other people and be like oh i want to you know want to talk to my brother because i'm close with him about this like but your responses were very blunt and abrupt like more like no well like if i try and talk to you about a situation that really affected me you'd be very cut and dry like it was black and white there was no in between and the in between was where i was and i remember hating it to the point where i was like i'm not even going to bother talking to him about it because i just felt i was bantering rather than venting to you i was debating with you about how i should be changing and i felt like i got defensive about it i'd be like i'm not the problem like you know blah 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 whatever's happens the problem or that person's problem not me like as we all do it's never our fault blame um, game yeah but that being said like it actually in the weirdest way it toughened me like it it was, I started seeing things as black and white because I'd obviously go think about that. I'd be hurt. What do you do when you're hurt about something? You dwell on it. You think about it. And I would think about what you'd said to me. And that's the thing. There's logic in it. It doesn't really make that full sense in that moment to me because I'm affected emotionally by it, but you're not. You're seeing this as clear black and white. And that's technically what it is in a lot of the situations I was saying where it is once you get rid of that cloud. That's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, but let's say, for instance, I was really sad and like, oh, I, you know, I, I want to, I would say to you, like, oh, I want to enjoy life. I want to do these things. Everyone seems so happy. People are going on trips around countries with friends. I don't do that. I don't have any friends. Blah, blah, blah. And you'd be like, I don't want to hear it. Just go get a job somewhere, make those friends. And then and it'll just happen from there. And I'd be like, no, but it's harder than that. Then I got to get employed. You'd be like, we'll go out and apply to more places, go to more social venues. Like you would have all these, and I go, no, uh, but, but it was almost like I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to hear actual solutions. But logically speaking, going out, getting a job in a social situation, those things I didn't want to do. That's what led me to being out of it. Just yeah. in the time, I, it didn't help in the time. That's the thing. But afterwards it did it really really did and that's kind of the foundation of where i built once i started getting out of it i started building <laughs> these foundations and it was based around the black and white view of my life um the gray was just the cloud that came over but yeah like i liked that i also had you know i had mum with i it, which is weird i always thought like at the time i was so pissed at you i remember i was like fuck you shut up but like with Mum would be absolutely supportive as hell. Um, yeah. No matter what, she would just try and it would break my heart seeing her. I could see that she'd be upset. And that's why I'd go to you. And then when I'd think that you would like shut me down like that, that sucked as well. But it was what I needed. It I really, think... like for me personally, I mean, that's the thing. Everyone's different. I have a lot of friends that have gone through stuff like this. And I know a lot of them, if I were to say just blunt, cut and dry things, a lot of them would just crumble. Uh, but it affects everyone differently, I guess. But it really did work for me. It, it spurred me on, gave me something to think about. And it gave me a different perspective because all of this, in my opinion, is our view of the world. It's how we're seeing it in that moment. We can shift it with nutrition, health, be positive. You can shift that, right? So when I started looking at that, my view of the world behind my lenses, I stopped, took them off, 
grabbed Jaws real quick and I was like, that's what he's looking at it like. It's cut and dry. I actually got to see things from the perspective of someone that had gone through stuff and gotten out of it. It gave me a fresh new set of eyes, even if I disagreed with them. But trust me, my eyes in that current moment were no better. They were yeah. much worse. So it did benefit me. I think um, for anyone listening to that, I probably still wouldn't recommend doing the approach I did. That was just a different yeah. point in my life. It was, yeah, yeah. Um, and while it is easy for those who aren't going through it to think they're seeing things logically, um, mm. it often is. Like, it, it is. There is everything's a yes or a no or black and white. There's no real in between if you want to make a change. Yeah. Um, but there's that whole process in between that goes through that. And often, you know, from my perspective, obviously, having seen you go through it and go through it myself is like, it's that point in the process of where you're at is where we need to meet people. So the more you listen and ask questions to find out where they're at, that's when you can help guide them rather than tr literally just being like black or white. Cause as much as you said, it was cool for most people, it shuts them down. I know at the time oh, it does it shut you down and it's not, you know, it's not serving anyone as much as I think I knew all the answers. Um, yeah. In also the saying thing that, you go. You got to understand there. The thing is, yeah, the person who's not going through it is looking at it through clear eyes. The other person has that cloud in the way. They're seeing it through an emotionally influenced point, and that's the thing. It is an emotional thing. It's an emotional experience. What they're going through. That's why it has to be treated so delicately. I think. Um, yeah. Like it worked for me, but at the same time, it 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 also crushed me at the time, and that didn't help at the time in a way it did but honestly it was getting back into taking care of my body my nutrition exercise and things like that that helped but yeah you probably had mum mum there supporting you and mum was dealing with all the time she is a saint did our mum needs to be cloned and sent everywhere around the world to every kid like um, she's actually a saint hey um but yeah, like uh, she did everything to what I would say was perfect. Even though, like at time where I disagree with how her methods and everything, when I look back on it now, I would not have changed a thing with how she went about it, except possibly make it less stressful on her. Yeah, because I'm sure it's absolutely traumatic to have it to yeah. have a kid constantly. And yeah. this is this is the thing, like the mental health or well being, depression, anxiety. It affects more than just that one person. Oh, and yeah. because we all know what happens when there's more than one person involved, shit gets hectic and can get messy because yeah. most people are thinking about themselves in some way because as individuals, we're all selfish. Like it's yeah. the sooner you can, oh, accept, the sooner you can accept that and be all cool with that. That's when we can move on to the next phase, which is like, what am I actually trying to get out of the situation? And at the time, for me, I feel like I was just trying to get you to snap out of it so you can stop yeah. um, through what you went through. And I feel like, you know, who knows for, and for me, that was my selfish part was cause then I didn't have to see, you know, mum yeah. go through whatever and et cetera, et cetera. But still touching back on the, on the thing of like, let's go down the quick thing of, are you okay day? And I think this is a, a perfect example because are you okay days? I believe it's one day a year where people love to jump on the social media bandwagon and reach out to people and say, are you okay? And there's two things that I see that need to, can be improved there. The first one being, if you're not there for the other 364 days a year, yeah. you're trying to get someone to open up to you and then you piss off. Yeah. Once you're not getting recognized through social media or however you sit. Secondly, mm. Most people don't know how to deal with it. And I was a perfect example of when you were going through it, let's say four years yep. ago before I started my education, um, was if you were to turn around to me and say, dude, I'm going to kill myself. I would not have any idea of how to, how to even respond to that. And so uh, there's, yeah. there's two things going on there. Minimum, there's probably more, but they're the main two that come to mind for me that as individuals and for people watching that, that's where we can start... <laughs> Um, improving ourselves to be better equipped to deal with that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because it, it, we shouldn't need a day, just like Christmas. Like we don't, we sh we don't need a day 
to nice. make us actually give a shit about people. Cause it's like you said, you were craving someone random in this is the street to ask you how you were on a random day. Yeah. yeah that's the and thing. And that could, uh, that could be any day of the year. If you choose to go out of your way. And once again, most people, the biggest thing we're scared of is talking to strangers. Like it's, it's scary, but if you can put your phone down, put it in your pocket and just try it, it's not as bad as you think. And same with, no, actually learn, you know, go do your mental health first aid or talk to more people who are going through stuff so you can learn a bit more about what it's like to go through it. Um, so we can better help people going through oh, it. God. Yeah, definitely educating people because especially like the older generations, it was more that wasn't a thing, especially amongst men. Like yep. it, it just yep. wasn't a thing, mental health really. It was just get over it, especially in Australia. Um I feel like educating people on it so it, because there's a stigma that it's such a bad thing. And I remember that was my insecurity. That's why I kept it to myself. That's why I was trying to make this facade that I was so happy all the time. That's I was afraid that people would find out and I'd be judged for it. And I think like judged for what I was going through an illness. Like, do you judge someone badly if they got, you know, suffering from cancer? Like you shouldn't know that's something they're dealing with. And it's a struggle that they have to deal with it day to day. If yep. anything, you should be supporting that person in what way you can, in what way you can plain and simple, whether a stranger or a family member. And um, yeah, just actually educating people on it properly is something that I think, you know, places are starting to do it now, which is good. It wasn't around as much when we were kids. Even like five years ago, like I was nah. yeah. still in Logan a couple of months ago and there was 10, 11 and 12 year olds stayed behind to talk about, you know, thoughts of suicide and stuff. And I was like, at 10 years old, I didn't even know what depression was. I was too busy watching cartoons and running around. Mm. Like, so the world's shifting and we need to shift with it to provide the support and education for people. Um, Actually, yeah, sorry, back onto your very first question. I just remembered, like, <laughs> um, I can't believe I forgot this. I ended up moving, I was in grade three, so I was eight years old, yeah. Um, when I was seven, seven or eight, whatever, yeah, um, and I moved schools because my anxiety, I don't know what triggered it either, nothing happened. I just started, I couldn't go to school, panic attacks. My school was too far away. I was just having all these panic attacks, hyperventilating, all that. Like, I was just a little mess. And my mom ended up moving me from one school to another school to try and help that. I, I couldn't do it. And then that very day, that I, it just was so bad. I was having panic attacks again. I just needed – it was weird. I'm not sure, but I was so sad. Did not know what happened. Mom pulled me out of that school, sent me to another school. And it was – it was yeah that helped a lot but uh that was yeah sorry that was just a side note to the start that was like yeah the first one that was big that lasted like two straight weeks of me just panic attacks each night and it was the thought of going to school the thought of interacting with people because at that age i was bullied a bit yeah and then as a response i noticed i would start bullying kids as well and that really ate away at me so i also had the copy <coughs> of bullying and then i got the guilt of it because i didn't it was a way of, yeah, me making myself feel better, I guess, in a way. Um, yeah. And I think, I... I think, once again, this is my opinion. I feel like it's, we all go through stuff. And like you were saying, it's like when you get to that very last point where you feel like it can't get any worse, it's like, if we can only get better, that's exciting. So figure out what you need to do to make it better. So is it, you know, do you get anxious t trying to talk to people or being in social situations? Like, for me, I hate being in big social situations, so I still don't do it as often mm -hmm. as I probably should. But, um, you know, I learned, you, you knew what I was like four years ago. Like I didn't like talking to people. I was super blunt. Yeah. I love drinking and drugs and all kinds of stupid shit. But then you get to that point where you feel you're at your bottom. And I thought I was at the bottom for where I was at. And then you're like, right, oh, well, if I can learn to talk to people, I'm going to learn something. So I learned to talk. Mm. I put myself in that situation, which made me so uncomfortable and so nervous. And I, so I can remember so much stupid stuff. I said, just trying to fit in and have conversations with people who I respected more than myself. Yeah. And I learned that skill. And now, you know, it's, it's a skill that I feel I'm good at. Secondly, it's like, right, I want to get back into my health and fitness. So started learning that and it's all a process. 
Mm. Like we all, we all know there's two sides. It's like be unfit or be fit, but the process in between is what shapes the results we get. Same yeah. with if you want to be successful in anything, you've got to learn the skills. Like we learned to walk or learn to ride a bike or learn yeah, to you don't just, 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 it's going to be scary. You're going to suck. But the sooner we can be all right, sweet, cool, let's do it. It's, you know, we're going to live for a hundred plus years. What is two years trying to learn this? Two years, four years, six years, 10 years, doesn't matter. To learn the skill to then have a better quality of life. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, definitely. With uh, the thing that you said about, uh, shit, getting, oh, what, sorry, I've forgotten what you said, the start part of that. I had a really good thought again. Um, um, I don't know what it was. No, I can't remember either. <laughs> You'll probably watch the replay. You basically, uh, you, yeah, sorry, this is it. The people, <clears throat> to everyone like listening that goes through something like this, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that were like me that you're probably going to go, I can't think of anything that, you know, find the joy in life or whatever you mentioned. 90% of you are probably sitting out there going, like, Well, I can't find that joy. I don't see it. But trust me, that is literally just where your mind is at. That's, that's not you. That is not you. And I can't stress that enough. That's where you're at right then in that moment. And it can last a long period of time and you can think it's permanent. Like if you go on a bloody drinking bender and stay drunk for a long time, it's just that, but it'll go away. And maintaining that thought is, is the start of it. But you've literally got to understand it's, it's more so through experiences. I mean, I would sit there and Google fun things to do on Google to start, just to give me ideas I, rather than go actually fucking try something like go <laughs> so I would Google like fun things to do outside and then be like, that sounds okay. It doesn't interest me uh, and just do nothing. I wouldn't just go do something. It was pointless, but that's because you're, you're not going to really see it like that in that moment. Maybe you're lucky and you do, but I don't think you will. And everything that is mentioned in this video, it might, you might be debating it like I would have back when I was in that stage. I would have been able to argue with this video tenfold, but what I'm saying is it's coming from a perspective of actually going through something, coming out the other side. And I went through it for free. I mean, I was eight years old. I'm now 24. I've gone like, and it was a constant thing, come in waves and goes, and it was not pleasant at all, but it made the better bits really good. I made me appreciate the good yeah. things a lot. And I, I definitely, I just got to that point, like I said, with uh, the health system, and exercising, taking a chance, and now I cycle, snowboard. You know, I do like I don't really snowboard. I tried it today, but yeah, like I, I'm out there. I'm fit. I'm active. Probably don't smoke with, as much. More pot. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm in Canada. <laughs> I, um, don't tell mum that. Um, yeah, um, yeah. No, I stopped doing that actually, and I think that played a big factor. I personally didn't think it actually made my thoughts worse but i do know for a fact it made me lazy as fuck i mean yeah. i was like content staying in bed and that didn't help at all that's the thing it wasn't the thing making me sad but it was was a thing that was not allowing me to get back to a good place and that was so <coughs> hard for me to deal with because i'd used that as a crutch for years whenever i was sad yeah i'd do that and obviously i was happy and giggling I'd go to sleep have a good night's sleep rather than sit up having anxiety attacks but and then I started thinking I was so reliant on it because I'd be like, what if I didn't get high? Would I, how would I, how would I actually hand, how would I convince myself to be happy? Oh, I don't have a substance to do that. So that was like a, that was like a fuck me moment. Like where I was just like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta look at something else. And That's... thank God mom, and kind of you actually, yeah, you went to mum about it and mum came to me. And I did that for her as she asked. And I just thought one month I'll try it. And I did. And I haven't really looked back. I mean, being over here, I haven't exercised. I haven't gym, sorry. And uh, but I didn't ever go back into that slump, which was good. And I think that's because not only I was, I took a whole uh, a concoction of still, still exercising pretty good. My social aspect, going out, meeting people. I'm traveling around a new country all the time. Like 
meeting new people every day. Like I've got all these things that are really, really good uh, support system kind of, they're really good in aiding you to get better, uh, yep. get out of it. And I've got that going on. So that's how I feel. And yeah. I just wanted to touch, we'll wrap it up, but um, yeah. you people, you got to understand like you can't have happiness without sadness. You can't have success without no. failure. You know, you can't you, have light without dark. Yeah, exactly. A, like there's always, got to be two sides of the coin and you've got to experience all of them. It's just like just when you start experiencing the side that you don't like, doesn't mean that shit's going wrong and the world's going to end. It's, it's an experience that makes you appreciate the better side more. Mm. Right? Oh, it also enables you to, if you start questioning why rather than just yeah. being in a, in a slump, if you start questioning why that's happening, you can start learning so much more about it. Right, which will then help you learn more about yourself of things you don't enjoy or why you might have failed or why you feel sad and how you can prevent that and create that better emotional awareness. Um, so it's yeah, it's everything is up for question. But let's let you get back out on the slopes. I really appreciate yeah. your time and I know we'll do a part two in the future. Um Yeah, definitely, man. Hit your mind will, will probably be racing about it now, things you wish you said and could have said yeah i definitely know i'll probably contact you back saying can you edit that part out or can we add something in? real and raw no editing but we'll do yeah. it <laughs> yeah no worries well yeah